Hi, I'm John Evans. Welcome to The Pick Connection. Today I'm at J&J &J Mechanical in Masontown, PA, and with me is Doug McDonough. Hey, Doug, how you doing? It's John, it's good to see you. Good seeing you, too. Uh, you've been working with J&J uh, &J Mechanical for a number of months now in the retrofit program. Is uh, that correct? A couple of years, as a matter of fact. We started out working with J&J &J Mechanical during the Pathways Out of Poverty program, Pathways to Green Careers. And now we've transitioned over to the uh, State Energy Sector Partnership Program. We are operating under a grant from them right now through the Private Industry Council uh, in an effort to provide retrofit classes to people who are seeking employment mm -hmm. in the green energy field. Yeah, and we're at uh, his plant today, uh, Jim Liston's uh, plant, J&J &J Mechanical, and Jim is going to take us on a tour today, show us all the uh, materials that are used in retrofitting a business or a home, uh, how they manufacture some of the, um, I guess, the duct work, the green duct work that uh, goes into these places. And uh, so it should be an interesting uh, show today, Doug. There's a lot more that goes into this than you think, so let's take a look. All right, let's go. Joining us now is Taylor Barnhart from J&J &J Mechanical. And uh, Taylor, thanks so much for coming on the program today. Thank you. Taylor, you're going to talk a little bit about the partnership uh, that J&J &J Mechanical has with the Private Industry Council in the retrofit classes that are going on in Manesson and exactly what is taught down there. Well, the first we go in and first thing we do is talk about safety and uh, explain to them that, you know, shut off the gas, the electrical power, um, oil if it's an oil furnace, uh -huh. you know, whatever. And it, uh, the, the metal that we work with is very sharp. Okay. And um, if there's an air conditioning heat pump retrofit, um, explain to recover the Freon so it doesn't damage the atmosphere. And okay. we show them how to do that. Okay. And, you know, wear safety glasses when you're doing it. You know, safety first and environment. That's all and important. Then and then explain the job that we're going to be doing. Usually it's just a retrofit, so we're just replacing a furnace or a heat pump or whatever. So you show them how the ho what lines to hook up, uh, how to be careful what lines you, you don't cut and things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it should give them the basic overview of the job that's going to be at hand, and then we go and do it. How long are these classes, uh, Taylor? Uh, it, it all depends. Uh, it, not long. Um, it all depends on how many questions they ask. You know, some a lot of people will get into airflow and mm -hmm. and BTUs and everything, and I, I'll go over that. And which you know, on a retrofit, it's you know we're replacing the same size unit with. Uh, you know, comparable unit. Okay. You know. And I know one of the things the private industry council was interested in these re retrofit careers are that uh, there are jobs there after they get out of class. And from what I understand, there are plenty of jobs in the area for these folks. Y yeah. Right now there is, and hopefully uh, it will stay that way. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of people are, are going green, trying to go green. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, whenever you upgrade, some of the furnaces we upgraded were, were very old, and they will see an immense. And, and this is, you know, going from maybe an 80% efficient furnace up to a 95 and higher percent efficient furnace. Wow. Well, that's a big step up. Yes. That's fantastic. Well, uh, Taylor, thank you so much for coming on and, and talking about the, the retrofit classes uh, that J&J &J has partnered up with uh, the Private Industry Council in Manesson. And, and join us uh, in our next segment will be Jim Liston. He's going to actually take us through and show us some of the machinery that makes all these materials to go into these retrofitted uh, homes and businesses. So you want to stay with us? We'll be right back. Visit the Private Industry Council website at www.privateindustrycouncil.com. We offer employer services, SAGE skills assessment, personal services, basic workplace skills, government procurement assistance program, customized job training, employer tax incentives, homeless prevention and rapid rehousing programs, welfare programs, and pathways out of poverty, services, training and certifications, eligibility, pathways for employers, and pathways for partners, education, adult education services, education and technology, youth services, early childhood development, the Head Start of Fayette County, Dad's Matter, Pre-K Counts, Steve Corson's newsletters, community benefits such as the PIC Connection, Telecommunication Center, Community Technology, links, contact information, the message board, and job openings. Private Industry Council, Westmoreland, Fayette, where needs are met, goals are reached. 
You can also find the Private Industry Council of Westmoreland Fayette on Facebook. Just search Private Industry Council for updates and information. Joining me now is Jim Liston, owner of uh, J&J Mechanical. Jim, hey, thanks for coming on the show today. No problem. Hey, I tell you, this is an interesting uh, place you have here. And you're going to take us through the process of how you make these materials for these retrofits and uh, just take us step by step through it. So you want to go ahead and start uh, yeah, taking our viewers uh, how this is? Uh, <coughs> excuse we, me. We start out through the uh, computer <coughs> and enter the fittings and the ductwork in. That produces a sheet like this. We bring it over to this machine, download the information into it. Uh, this, this does the layout. These are the stickers that tell the men how it goes together and what end treatments and what not it gets. And as you'll see later on, how it goes through the machinery and stuff to, you know, make up a system. A lot of these furnaces we're putting in are now like 33 inches tall. Typically, you're taking out a 48-inch tall furnace. Oh, okay. So much more compact. Much more doesn't compact. take as much room. So you have and to more do efficient. the ductwork. Oh, yeah. way more efficient. Uh, about the highest efficiency we see out there that we are retrofitting is near 80%. Mm. Uh, on some instances, they have a higher percentage efficient furnace, but due to the way it's operating and installed or oversized or whatever, the efficiency is way low. Okay. And, uh, you know, we, we check those and come up with what is the best fit, how oversized is the existing equipment, can it be reduced in size. It seems to be a lot of, uh, a lot in the past was oversized just because the guy was like, well, I'd rather have bigger. Well, yeah, bigger yeah. is not better. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to ask you that. Yeah, I, I can remember as a kid, you know, well, hey, look at this big furnace we right. got. But that doesn't necessarily mean it was as, as efficient as no, a smaller No, definitely ones. not. And, uh, and uh, we're guilty of it ourselves, yeah. you know. Well, that probably... Years ago, you know, yeah, the guy wants a big furnace. Hey, we'll sell you next size bigger. Yeah. yeah. Well, that probably, these uh, smaller furnaces, uh, Jim, probably fit in better with these older homes around here yeah. because this area there are a lot of old homes. A lot homes. of old homes. Some are dugout basements. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the biggest problem we've ran into in the industry over the years as the efficiency of the air conditioning and heat pump came up, so did the size of the coil. That was how they gained the efficiency by making larger oh, okay. coils. Well, in so doing, you don't have enough height to fit it in the basement. And those so <laughs> they shrunk the furnaces down. Uh, we offer uh, our most like our most likely candidate is 95 percent efficient and above for a retrofit okay all right and well, uh, of course we add in the uh programmable thermostats and no oh, those it, are nice yes and and the the savings is there that it's it's easy you can show it on paper and of course they see that in their bill also yeah, absolutely all this modern technology it's it's uh good to be put it to good use and reduce those uh energy costs in everybody's yes. home Jim, what uh, machine is this? What does this? This is a, a Vulcan plasma cutter, and it is tied into the computer where we just we simply bring up a screen and it asks for the information, the dimensions, and what which we obtain from the actual site. We come back into here, enter it in the program. Then this machine actually burns out shapes. Okay. And like I said, with the stickers, it shows you the orientation of which way it's uh, formed, what the end treatments are, how it hooks together. And then it continues to go through the shop, and and you're going to take you're going to take us through that process. So uh, uh, we'll get that on the screen as we uh, talk here. And uh, and the final, uh, how how long does it take to put all this together, Jim? Uh, typically, when you go out and uh, measure up a site or whatever, and decide what equipment you're going with, then you come into here. You've probably got anywhere from two to four hours, depending on how big of a difference it is. And then you're looking at eight to ten hours to change it out in the field and you know do mm -hmm. all the safety checks and startups and okay you know and you see a lot of uh, business out there uh, in these communities with these older homes wanting to convert to get more energy efficient uh, oh, yes. furnaces and that and, and uh, along with it is as we're in there we see deficiencies in the duct work or the windows or the openings above the block and stuff and you point those out to the okay. customers and try to get them addressed. Because I was on the last segment I was talking with Taylor and Taylor put those classes together, those retro, retrofit classes together in Manesson for the private industry council and I was just asking those folks who are coming out of those positions, there's jobs available for them. Oh yes and it's, uh, it's a growing industry. Uh, I think there's not as 
not as much action at the beginning of this year because of the fact of the tax credits and stuff that were available before. Mm -hmm. However, with the higher end stuff like the geothermal net, you can get up to 30% tax credit and you can actually carry it over to your period if need be. Wow. So they are more expensive going in, but depending on how high of efficiency you want to go, you know, there is still some help out there with the tax credits and whatnot. But yes, uh, and then a lot of times we run into a situation where you have a furnace that's defective. Mm. So automatically you take them up to the 95. You can still put a lower efficiency in, but we just, okay. you know, I don't think we've done in six or eight years, I don't think we've put a, anything below a 90 or higher. Okay. Well, Jim, thanks for uh, coming on the show, and we look forward to having a partnership with you, Thank you. Uh, in a long run with the Private Industry Council, and uh, you're going to take us through a tour here now of the various machines you have in your plant. Yeah, and show how the duct okay. comes out. We start out with a flat sheet of metal and a piece of paper All right. with a sketch. All right, so you don't want to miss this, so stay with us. This is the segment of the show that I asked our viewers, if you have questions or comments about today's show, you can email me at jevans at privateindustrycouncil.com, and I will then select a few messages to read at the end of the next show. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Hi, Jim Liston, j and Mechanical. Uh, what we're going to do here is input some of the measurements that the guys sent in on the project for a retrofit, and we'll enter it into this computer. It does all the layout work. It'll actually burn out blanks, which we'll show you in a little bit. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and enter some fittings here. So we choose our end treatments for it. Okay, the job is processed, so now we will print the labels and the job reports, and that'll give us the paperwork that we take back to the computer. And once we click this button, it sends it to the back, we head back there and begin the process. Okay, here we are at the plasma table. This is where the uh, computer sent all the information to. We programmed in the job name and we're going to hit cut and it'll begin forming the pieces or cutting the pieces. One of the most valuable employees we have. It doesn't have sick days or paid holidays. As you can see, it optimizes the metal. There's very little waste here. From this process, we take the fittings over and we run them through a machine that's called a beater. And what it does is indents the metal and it uh, strengthens it. Anytime you put a bend in metal, you're putting strength to it. Go ahead, sir. Let's take 
marker shows me what to do with it. Uh, this is a Pittsburgh lock forming machine and it puts an edge on it that you'll see later on how it uh, lets the fittings go together. That would be the female Pittsburgh. On the back of the sticker it tells me that I want to break down seven degrees so it tells me how I need to form. The notches show where the bends go. Putting the mill side of the Pittsburgh on. That's just one seam. There's a few different seams in sheet metal work. I'm going to put the drive on. This is connection point to put the ductwork together. There will be another piece of ductwork added onto this piece. Now we go down and put it together. When we're doing a lot of duct work for a big job, all the pieces are numbered and it tells you how to put it together here. That's how the pieces go together. That would be an elbow for on the side of a filter thing. Welcome back and now we are going to travel to Manesson and observe an energy auditor training class instructed by Ann Fast. Let's go. Alright guys, so what did we say the answer was for this question? 49.28. 49 49.28? 49 yeah. Alright, well what unit is that? Keep it feet per minute? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep it feet per minute. 
Forty nine point two eight. Yeah, forty nine point two eight. Oh yeah. Forty nine point two eight guys. Or forty nine point two eight cubic feet per minute. Uh, and then it says or uh, if we don't know this information, there's another way to find an approximate value. It's fifteen times the number of bedrooms, which how many bedrooms do we have? Two. 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 Yeah. So that would give us thirty. Thirty. Which mm, not as accurate, but Close enough if you don't have that information. Okay, on the page right underneath where the three blocks are, the yeah. volume is 8,448. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So you multiply that times 0.35, yeah. divided by 60, it gives you your 49.28. Yeah. Yeah. And you take the 49.28 and you multiply oh, that times your end factor, which is 16.2. Oh, Here, guys, as we move down well, to the well, next line, you just take the answer from the previous line. Which was the 49.28. That's already was just how you, another way you could get Yeah, that was like so a less approximate way to figure that out if we didn't have the volume. 49. Okay, so that, yeah, so that's the one we put in the first and then we space that on the third line. Okay, so the higher airflow required is the 49.28 cubic feet per minute. Mm -hmm. Multiply that by the end factor, which we said was the 16.2. Alright, and that's going to give us. 798.326. What is it? 798.336. Alright, and then the next one, it just says blower door reading, um, which is already in the, in the third block. Try to separate this from this. This is the higher number we want to use. Yeah. All right, this she got know, all that. She just didn't fill this part in. Yet. Oh, still got this that one part. here is so this exactly. is the yeah. yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, you just Got take that from here. Yeah. I'm not sure how. I thought this. I thought he was saying all this is how we are the leakage I thought he was saying all this is how we are the leakage No, we got this out of 70%. So you would multiply 550 times 49.28 to get the blower door reading? No, right? Because you're using this out? Yeah. Equation. Okay. Alright, so does everyone have the numbers filled in for that section? Yeah. Understand how we did how we the math, how we got the answer? Yeah. Alright. So let's move along uh, to below that it says regarding infiltration, notes observations. Well, she just this. What was the blower door reading? It's up there. Oh, it's up there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So Lord, we're tested 50 CFM 50. 5,160. Alright. Okay. Alright, so windows. Yeah. Is there a significant air leakage by the windows? Yes. 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 Any comments? <coughs> why, why were there significant air leaks? I don't think they were that bad, but not like. I don't know. Yeah, when, I, when, I checked the kitchen, when I checked the kitchen windows, there was a lot of air leakage coming in. Right what type of windows were they? Sliding windows. Yeah, the sliding windows. Where air was coming in through where they joined together. Mm -hmm. so well, they, yeah, the, the windows were pretty new. It's just sliding windows aren't very tight. They're very leaky. Um, and then the block windows, are, which are usually pretty airtight, but you know, where they... Yeah, the crack mortar. Yeah, the, the mortar between them were cracked. So I mean, that's good. That's an air leak right there. Yeah, that oh, yeah, was a big time break. What about, uh, what's that? Sales. I still don't, like, understand why I'm supposed to include, like, the light switches, because a lot of air was, like, pouring the out of out, there. Definitely yeah, a lot of air the coming outlet, from the light switches. The yeah, it was, like, the same yeah, as the light switches. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They were really I bad. I in the living room, and they were a lot of air leaks. Yeah, they were bad. Light yeah. switches and the house. You told me to write it on... Exact page this Right here. Oh, where no. you told me to write that. Addition to other. Is like no. Yeah, they, yeah, they don't, they don't leave. Uh, they don't have a space for everything in the house. But uh, yeah, there's like major air leaks. Yes. You never know there how much are. air can get in through them outlets. Yeah, it's yeah, not something you really think about.
All right, this is our question and answer segment of the uh, Pick Connection. This is where I answer uh, emails that I got from the previous show. And I did get uh, one email from a gentleman by the name of Ralph, who lives right outside of Uniontown. And uh, he asked me, if I had a GED, can I still attend the adult education program? And Ralph, yes, you can. The adult education program prepares students for post-secondary education and training programs and employment. The goal is to prepare students with the skills necessary to be successful in the workplace and to assist those enrolling in post-secondary education and training programs to test into credit-bearing classes and be ready for post-secondary curriculum and responsibilities. And uh, who is eligible? Anyone with an educational need, Ralph, is eligible. So I hope that answers your question and uh, stay watching. Hello, I'm John Evans, and you can also tune in and listen to the Pit Connection Radio Show, broadcast every Friday at 9.40 a.m. on WMBS 590 AM Radio. Thanks to Jim Liston, uh, owner of J&J Mechanical, and Taylor Barnhart for coming on the show today, and uh, also Doug McDonough. And uh, this computer here uh, controls all the machinery uh, out there that we were looking at earlier. So uh, just wondering... Just wondering what this button does here. Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. Taylor. Yes. John's not down at that computer, is he? He left the lamp over oh here. Oh dear. <laughs> Thanks for watching the big connection.